The Kentucky tornadoes may be a part of a new trend caused by man-made climate change's impact on the jet stream. Here is what you need to know. The areas in which tornadoes are occurring most often is changing, and it could be because of climate change, according to CNN, who spoke to tornado expert Victor Gensini in the wake of the catastrophic tornadoes that killed at least 80 people in Kentucky last week. Over the past four decades, tornado frequency has been decreasing in parts of the central and southern Great Plains, known as Tornado Alley, while increasing in more heavily populated states east of the Mississippi River. Tornadoes are primarily fueled by warm, moist air from strong winds that shift direction as they rise up, and this could be affected by climate change because the jet stream, air currents in the upper atmosphere that influence weather patterns, is known to be affected by rises in greenhouse gas emissions in the atmosphere. The changing jet stream has long been linked to other problematic weather phenomena with, for instance, the polar vortex unleashing frigid temperatures and rare snow on parts of the northeast United States and Canada over Mother's Day weekend last year. The polar vortex is a band of low-pressure Arctic air located in the middle and upper tropospheres and extends into the stratosphere, but it is held in place by the jet stream and as such disturbances can push frigid wintry air to parts of Canada and the US, while high pressure systems of warmer air bulge northwards elsewhere. The freezing temperatures that hit Texas in February were also attributed to the same phenomena. However, conversely, so was record-breaking heat in the lower 48 states of the US for November and December, as well as record-breaking autumn rainfall in the Pacific Northwest and British Columbia. There, the Washington Post reported strange warm weather in the U.S. had been caused by a stuck polar vortex, explaining that the polar vortex steers storms and usually changes its shape and position, but scientists said it's been stuck in one place for an unusually long time. And that's why the U.S. has been having such strangely warm weather over November and the beginning of December. Such significant impacts on weather patterns means that the jet stream is an area of significant focus for climate scientists trying to predict what it will do next. And in September, a study published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences warned the planet's northernmost wind tunnel, called the North Atlantic Jet Stream, will start migrating northward if the Earth keeps warming up. This would impact North America and Europe in the form of more severe flooding, droughts, and heat waves. They explained that the jet stream's band of fast-moving air is created by the difference in pressure between cold Arctic air and warmer air to the south. As such, the study's researchers bored deep holes in the Greenland ice sheet and looked at the way snow layers had been deposited over the past 1,250 years. From this, they calculated the past positions and intensity of the powerful air current and said that while the current fluctuations in the jet stream's position and intensity are still within historic bounds, their calculations indicate that the weather-controlling air current would migrate northward by 2060 if greenhouse emissions continue at the current pace. According to Reuters, at least 23 people have died due to a string of tornadoes going through eastern cities in the U.S. Currently, roughly 90 million people are at risk due to the massive storms. According to the National Weather Service, tornadoes are the roughest type of storms. They are formed quickly and are on the ground for less than 15 minutes. However, they can reach speeds of 300 miles per hour, or roughly 483 kilometers per hour, making them extremely destructive. Tornadoes mostly occur during spring and summer in the United States. They form when cold and dry winds from Canada collide with warm and humid air coming from the Gulf of Mexico. According to the National Centers for Environmental Information, most tornadoes in America happen around Florida and in what is known as Tornado Alley, a region in the southern plains of the central United States. The Storm Prediction Center can forecast if tornadoes will form by observing weather conditions that could develop into storms. However, tornado warnings cannot be issued until the tornado is visible or detected by a weather radar. Tornadoes are measured using the enhanced Fujita or EF scale, which goes from 0 to 5. An EF level 0 is equal to gusts of wind that last 3 seconds and travel at speeds of 65 to 85 miles per hour, or 105 to 138 kilometers per hour. Tornadoes with an EF rating of 5 have winds reaching up to 200 miles per hour or 322 kilometers per hour. The recent string of tornadoes in Alabama have an EF rating of 3 with winds reaching 150 miles per hour or 241 kilometers per hour. 
A huge hole has been discovered in the Arctic's oldest and thickest ice, previously thought to be the most stable ice in the region. According to a study published in the Nature Geoscience Journal, there was a powerful storm north of Ellesmere Island on May 2020, and a long, narrow crack formed on May 14th. By May 15th, the crack had formed into a polynya, an area of open water in a region that is normally ice-covered, around 30 kilometers wide and 100 kilometers long. With ice around 4 meters thick, this Arctic ice is predicted to be the last to remain in place during summer melting seasons, but the study emphasizes it's surprisingly vulnerable to cracks. In the short term, the newly open areas of ocean water can create ideal conditions for life, but as ice melts and moves offshore, species like walruses and seabirds lose access to it, and eventually it becomes so hot that species can't survive. On May 26, 2020, this particular polynya rapidly closed, but the study's lead author warned in a press release that polynyas may become more common or larger in the future. The Guardian reports that climate scientists have detected warning signs of the collapse of the Gulf Stream, one of the planet's main potential tipping points. The research found an almost complete loss of stability over the last century, of the currents that researchers call the Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation, or AMOC. The currents are already at their slowest point in at least 1,600 years, but the new analysis shows they may be nearing a shutdown. Such an event would have catastrophic consequences around the world, severely disrupting the rains that billions of people depend on for food in India, South America, and West Africa. While increasing storms and lowering temperatures in Europe, the AMOC is driven by dense, salty seawater sinking into the Arctic Ocean, but the melting of fresh water from Greenland's ice sheet is slowing the process down earlier than climate models suggested. The analysis was based on fingerprints the AMOC leaves in surface temperature and salinity patterns. It showed a critical threshold is being reached beyond which the system may collapse. A severe heat wave affecting 40 million Americans has seen temperatures over 100 degrees Fahrenheit beat records in Wyoming, Utah, Arizona, and Southern California, according to NBC News. It has two main causes, according to the Associated Press. First, a heat dome, or area of high pressure. Sinking air from the Earth's atmosphere prevents air near the ground from rising. That sinking air operates like a cap, trapping warm ground air in place, according to the U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Without rising air, there is also no rain, and nothing to stop hot air from becoming hotter. That high pressure works in combination with a two-decade dry spell that has sucked moisture out of soil in much of the western United States. Usually, some of the sun's heat evaporates moisture in the soil, but according to the Associated Press, scientists say the western soil is now so dry that the energy is instead used to make the air even warmer. As a consequence of the extreme heat, at least 14 new wildfires broke out this week in Montana and Wyoming alone. Firefighters also fought fires in Arizona and New Mexico, with U.S. Department of Agriculture meteorologist Gina Palma saying these were certainly conditions that we would not normally see in June. Power networks across the country have also been strained due to increased use of air conditioning, according to Reuters. Operators in California asked homeowners across the state to conserve energy in the late afternoon and evening when demand surges. In graphs published on its website, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency showed that heat waves like this are almost three times as frequent as they were in the 1960s, increasing steadily for over 60 years. Furthermore, the duration of these heat waves is now almost a full day longer. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.